Hey, friend, Chris Van Deviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I just want to revel in the fact that Logic comes with a slew, just a wealth of projects, of templates for you to examine, dig into, and get inspired by, or just get acquainted with Logic Pro 10. Since the major update of 10.5, which introduced to us live loops in Logic Pro 10, we now have a whole slew of starter grids for us to examine this new feature. On top of that, we have tutorials to help us get acquainted and learn about live loops, the quick sampler step sequencer, which I think was a brilliant move on the team at Apple's part. Additionally, we have demo projects, and these have typically been projects of major artists for us to dissect and poke through. And on top of that, project templates for you to just get going with logic with these pre-populated templates, whether it's for hip hop or electronic, singer-songwriter, orchestral, multi-tracking, or music for picture. We'll paw through each of these different elements of Logic, but I'll also bring in GarageBand iOS on my iPad because I think there are some clues of things to come for Logic hidden within GarageBand. I can only speculate, but it's fun to speculate. Now, I think obviously the most exciting pieces would be the starter grids in the demo project because these are pre-populated projects for you to listen to and examine the processing and get ideas and get a feel for what other creatives are doing. And I have a whole video dedicated to this particular demo project, which is Billie Eilish's Ocean Eyes. But Logic has come with demo projects prior to this one. I have a whole video dedicated to the Beck Colors demo project that came with Logic Pro 10 prior to the Billie Eilish track that was produced by Greg Kirsten. Prior to that, there was a Foster the People track, Blaine a Beat. In fact, I have a folder of the different projects here. And if we just pop this open, you can see the project. Cool, I'll link that in this video. But I think the tutorial section here is a huge boon to Logic users who are maybe not that comfortable with the new features and want to get acquainted. So let's open something like the Quick Sampler tutorial. And as you can see, we're loaded up with an instance of Quick Sampler. If we hide Quick Sampler, if you just work your way down each of the tracks, so work your way down, you can see that the plugin window is linked. So that helps guide us through. In addition, we have these notes here to help us walk through the project as well. So about the tutorial, and then we go step one, step two, sampling sources, and let's just squash up the project so you can see what's going on here. And this is a great way to get comfortable with these features. And I did this right when Logic 10.5 came out. That's how I got acquainted with all of these features for the videos that I posted. I think this is brilliant, and I hope that the team at Logic will expand upon this through the future. But let's head back to the template section. New from template, we'll close this down. Additionally, you have project templates, and these can help you get started in Logic depending on the style of music that you work with. Many users will reach out to me asking for templates. They'll say, hey, Chris, do you have a template for hip hop or do you have a template for recording? And this is because I have a couple of templates on my website that you can download for free. And they're focused on mixing and mastering, mixing more rock oriented music, but still many of the ideas in there can be a benefit to just about any genre. So this is a great place to get started with ideas. For example, the hip hop template here, if we choose it, it will load up with a series of instruments, even a drummer track. So you can get right down to creating. And if we open the mixer, we have different instances of the retro synth and alchemy and and other instruments in Logic. So you can get ideas for what might work for you, but you can further configure this template and then save your own template by going up to File and Save as Template. You can create your own template to work from from then on out. If we go back up to New from Template and dig into the multi-track recording template, I think this is very helpful. We open with a Smart Control instance, so it's more like an analog workflow of just adding a touch of compression or EQing the low, mid, or high, working with the sends, and if we open the mixer, we have quite a few tracks. So just instantiate the inputs of your interface with this template. And you can see everything comes with a compressor, an EQ. We have some instances of Space Designer for reverb. I really think this is a great tool for us Logic users. Let's go back to new from template. But what I love is the new starter grids. They come in a variety of different styles of music from hip hop to electronic, EDM, and what I love about them is that they're essentially more demo projects for you to use. I love the new Neon Dreams and Solaris starter grids. They're neo disco type of sounds, and I don't know, they're just fun, four on the floor. Let's check it out. And it has plenty of creative ideas. You can play them cell by cell, scene by scene, open the mixer, you can poke around in the mixer and see what kind of processing are they using for these different tracks. I'm especially interested in what's going on on the stereo output. 
Aside from the remix effects, we have the channel EQ doing a little bump, and this is present on just about every one of the starter grids. An exciter to add a little top end excitement, the sub bass, which is sometimes employed, the multipressor, and the limiter. And let's just take a quick listen to some of these scenes. I mean, that is legitimately awesome. I love it. And if you're not too comfortable with the starter grids, well, heck, let's just open the main tracks area and start dragging some of these cells over. So I'll make sure to stop everything in the scene and we'll just select these regions and drag them right into the main tracks area. And just make sure to set the focus to the tracks area instead of over in the live loops area. And if we take a listen and take a look, we could see that there's some cool stuff going on. I mean, that Mellotron with the chroma verb, the tape delay, I mean, that's sick. And you can examine the performances. There's a lot of cool instrumentation in these starter grids that you could use as samples, patches for your own projects. Now, let me bring your attention to my iPad with GarageBand iOS, because I think there are some clues of what's to come for Logic hidden within there. And maybe, maybe not, who knows? But I think it's still fun to take a look. You can see here in the live loop section, there is far more than just what's in the starter grid section in Logic. I mean, if you take a look, we have a rock live loop starter grid. That's pretty interesting. None of the ones in Logic are rock. We have electro funk. We have Chinese traditional and modern. We have some toy box type of stuff. Like what's going on here? Let's even open the Chinese modern just so we can get a sense for what else is out there for us. And I'll just play a couple scenes here. I mean, that's so cool. And we have all the instrumentation. We just don't have the grid. So you could actually save this GarageBand iOS project, upload it to iCloud, and then open it up in Logic for you to further check out and, and work within Logic if that's what's more comfortable to you. Let's take a look at some of the other grids here. I mean, we'll check out the Electro Funk because I suspect this will be awesome. Check it out. That's so awesome. And let's just check out one more section of the GarageBand iOS. If we take a look at the sound library here, GarageBand iOS users get to enjoy essentially sample packs and sound packs. I mean, just about all of this stuff we have in Logic. You click on each one, so we have songwriter drummers, and you click on it and you can see three drummers with three different drummer sets and 30 drummer loops, which we enjoy in Logic. Flex and flow, I mean, we definitely have those starter grids in Logic. I'm sure we have the sounds, but there's some stuff we don't have. For example, if we click on Chinese traditional and Japanese traditional, there are touch instruments in GarageBand iOS that don't exist in Logic Remote, which I find very interesting. And if you click on Tone Collection, there's 22 different guitar patches. And if we go down here, we've got Bass Amp Boutique, which has 30 bass patches that I've been looking around and maybe they're under different names in Logic, but I can't find them. And I'll even open a project to show you here. Let's go to File. Go down to open recent and let's open this GarageBand tone pack that I saved. And these tones, I saved a project from GarageBand iOS, loaded it into Logic, and then just played a guitar riff just to hear some of these. So let's take a listen. This is the Brownstone patch, which I can't find. I mean, when you click on a track that has a patch attached to it, so let's see, none of these are loading. Usually if you load up a patch that exists in Logic, for example, I'll just load up this Brit and Clean guitar patch and you can see it's loaded up in the library. But if I select any of these other tracks, they don't seem to appear. So I could be wrong, but check it out. 
Here's the brownstone, and then I'll switch between the melted transistors, which is pretty nuts, and then some of these other ones. Melted transistors is nuts. That's aggressive, but Rio Grande. Auditorium clean. I mean, I don't know. I think it's cool that GarageBand enjoys these features and I'm hoping that they'll come to Logic. And there's even base patches too, which I thought I had saved, but apparently not. Let's just load this and hope for the best. Check it out. I'm sure that there's no data punk preset anywhere in Logic because let's even take a look. I mean, under crunch base, I mean, we don't have much to go on. Or even experimental base. Not even the 8-bit blaster. So that's all I want to say is that there are sounds, there are starter grids, there are things going on in GarageBand iOS that have not appeared in Logic. And I'm kind of hoping that Apple will follow along this path that GarageBand is taking in terms of sample pack sound libraries that, that come in a fairly exciting experience, in my opinion. All that to say there's a wealth of sounds and projects and templates and all sorts of things for you to dig into as a Logic user. And it's another reason why I love Logic Pro 10. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.